Father, we're so thankful that you are in this room. Holy Spirit, that you equip us and that you give us exactly what we need. I pray that, that tonight's message will drop from our head to our hearts and from our hearts to our hands, that we'll live out exactly what you want for us. I pray, Lord, that we will feel your presence, that we'll open our hearts, that we'll soften our hearts to what you need to do in and through us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. So married life is great, in case you're wondering. Uh, I've been married for about four years now. And yeah, that, it's, it's exciting stuff. We started dating in school. That's about 13 years ago. And we've been together. We've been married. So I actually don't know what it's like to be single. And I don't want to find out. <laughs> so uh, one of the interesting things that, that Lauren likes to do is she likes to give me frights. Are you a person that likes to give frights? I want to know these people. So our, our senior leader, Pastor Trev, loves to give frights. It is, it's like he, he loves he loves giving frights. So when you walk around the office, you actually have to walk like this. Like, who's, who's going to come there? And you know, the funniest thing is seeing people's reactions when they get frights. When my wife or Pastor Trev or anyone gives me a fright, I just lift my hands. I don't know why. It's just my natural instinct. I'm like, and then you know when you pull that face when someone gives you a fright, like... Yeah, or you make that sound. Who makes a sound when they get a fright? All oh, right. Do you go like, ow? <laughs> or you just raise your hand. Or I know someone, and I don't know if they're in the room right now, that actually punches when they get a fright. I have been punched by this person, and I know multiple other people have as well. But that's a reaction we get. When we get a fright, you have a reaction, right? And the question is this. When we are under pressure, do we react or do we respond? Is it a reaction or is it a response? Responding, while technically still a reaction, takes into consideration the desired outcome of the interaction. It's thought through, in other words. A reaction may result in a positive or negative outcome, whereas a response is engineered to produce a positive or negative reaction. So a response is thought through, whereas a reaction is more emotional. Reacting is emotional. Response is emotional intelligence. There's a difference. We need to be people that respond and not only react. So the message tonight is titled Turning Trials to Triumph. Turning Trials to Triumph. And uh, we, we've been busy with this two parts and, and we, we, we had part two this morning and part one last week. And this is just a different take, a different perspective on some of these points that, that we've had here. And you can see there's a reaction and there's a response within this account that we're going to read. But do you react or do you respond? That's our question. When we're under pressure, when we squeeze, do you react or respond? I find, it, I find it quite funny that when some people get angry, words come out, sometimes very colorful words. And then they look at me and they know that I go to church or whatever and so, some of these friends don't. And then they're like, oh, sorry. And I was like, why are you apologizing? It just, it, it's, it's one of those things that just come out. I, I find it hilarious when that happens at church because <laughs> then it's like, whoa, is God going to strike me? But that's, that's, that's a reaction. When we're under pressure, do we react or do we respond? When you get cut off in traffic, maybe for those varsity students or those that are working, when you, when you drive there and you get angry in traffic, right? Do you react or do you respond? Do you use particular fingers or do you just carry on driving to work? Do you react or respond? Do you use colorful words? Do you react or respond? Do you hoot? Do you climb on the hooter? I'm not going to lie. I'm a hooter. I'm a hooter kind of guy. I, I climb on the hooter. That's, but it's a reaction, right? We need, we need to work on that. But at the end of it, every one of us face serious trials. Yeah. Especially over these last years, we faced some massive trials. Maybe for some of you, you started in varsity last year. Then COVID hit. That changed everything that you thought varsity would be like. For some of you that went to high school, that changed everything what you thought high school would be like. Online versus physical. That's changed the dynamic of where we're at, right? Those are trials that we go through, but do we react or do we respond to those trials? What about relationships? Relationships with our parents can be strained. Relationships with friends. When you leave school, many of us will lose friends. That's a trial that you go through, right? What about um, romantic relationships? As we get older, we start thinking about a family in the future, start thinking about getting married, and th that's, that's, there's a reaction or there's a response to that. The question is, which is it? What about pressures of studies or pressures of work? Pressures in general, is it reaction or response that comes out? What about mental stress? Feeling really down, especially us when we're in lockdowns, isolated. Was there a reaction or response to that? What about anxiety, feeling very nervous, feeling worried about what's going on in the world? Reaction, response, those are real trials that we go through. And I ask the question again, will we allow the trial to shape us 
or break us? Will that trial break us and we won't stand up again? Or will we allow it to shape us so that we can stand up, move forward and be better than we were before, be stronger than we were before or learn a lesson from that, allow God to shape something in us. A phrase that's really helped me is that I need to do my best and trust God with the rest. I can only do what I can do, but I need to rely on God for what I can't do. And that's the big difference. So we're going to look at an account where just after Jesus feeds 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, then there's a trial that his disciples face. You can read about this in Matthew 14, 22. Is everyone okay? Good. So immediately after this, after this miracle, right? Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble. Important to note that even if you follow Jesus, you can still get in trouble. Even if you commit your life to God, there can still be struggles. It's important that we recognize that. We can't expect that as soon as I follow Jesus, all my troubles go away. Read the Bible. You can see the disciples that hung around with Jesus for, for three years. They went through challenges. They went through trials, but there was also triumphs. So the disciples were in trouble far away from the land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves about three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning, right? Three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Can you imagine being at home, seeing someone walk on your swimming pool? What would you do? Be honest, react or respond. <laughs> but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then look, look at Peter, look at his response, look at his reaction. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. If it's really you, Lord, tell me to come to you. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink response or reaction save me lord he shouted jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him you have so little faith jesus said why did you doubt me when they climbed back into the boat the wind stopped then the disciples worshiped him you really are the son of god they exclaimed isn't that what an incredible account of the disciples their faith being tested we know that for 12 hours they battled in that storm before Jesus came to help them. For some of us, maybe you've been battling with something for, I don't know, 12 years. Maybe for some of you, it's been 12 months. Maybe it's been 12 days. And you're wondering, where is Jesus in all this? Jesus eventually came. It was a test of their faith. It was a trial that they went through, which they could choose would either shape them or break them. And we can see that it shaped them. It shaped Peter's faith. Can you imagine Peter would go, would go to everyone else and tell them, you know what? I, I walked on water towards Jesus, but then I saw the trial and I started sinking and I called out to him and he saved me. All, all of that happened in an instant. Can you imagine how his faith must have been built up or broken down? What's interesting to me is this isn't the first time they were in a storm like this. The disciples were in a storm like this. Similarly, where Jesus was in the boat with them, he was sleeping, but he was in the boat with them. Jesus was in the boat and they still faced the storm. And again, their faith was tested. They saw him calm the storm, but still they were worried about the storm. We've seen God do incredible things over and over again. Yet, when we face trials, I can't do this. I can't do this. What if we change that? Lord, if it's you, I'll come to you walking on the water. I'll step into that. Imagine, imagine what we could do. So the first response is to keep moving. Keep moving. At Bridge, we say we move lives, moving lives. That's what we're about. We're about moving lives, which means we don't want you to stagnate. We don't want you to stop. We want you to be still, know that he's God, but keep moving. We need to move forward. We need to be aspirational. Look at verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus just performed a miracle. Don't you think he could have said, I need a holiday? Listen, that, that, that was hectic, guys. I, I need a break. Let me just take a weekend off. Let me just rest a bit for my next miracle. Immediately after this, he insisted, let's get back into the boat. Let's go to the other side. Let's move to the next thing. That was great. That was wonderful. But listen, we've got people to, to save. We've got people to help. We need to move on. I, I, I fear that there's a pandemic of apathy taking over. You know what apathy is? Apathy is the, the, the blur generation. It's just... Life's just going to happen to me. Disinterested. Whatever happens, happen. I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm just going to, huh. 
whatever, whatever happens, happens. I think COVID has maybe, or lockdowns have maybe built that into us that we become apathetic. We don't have zest for life anymore. We're not enthusiastic. I love in worship when people are worshiping and, and genuinely enthusiastic about it. Don't be apathetic about your relationship with Jesus. Let's, let's be enthusiastic about it. God's best for our life is not to become complacent. Imagine my goal in life, my whole, entire existence is to be average. That's not what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to be average. He wants so much more for us. That's why He wants us to move. And maybe the trials help us to get out of our comfort zones, get out of our boats and step into something different. It's, it's, it's what is God's best for our lives? You know, it's interesting in school, people always ask you a question, what do you want to do when you, when you leave school? What's, what's next in your life? You know, what's next? Uh, and, and a lot of people, I don't know if this was just my experience, but a lot of people wanted to become a vet. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Why do you want to become a vet? Because I love animals. That's the worst reason to want to become a vet. Let's talk about your math, Mark. Oh, yeah, that's not great. Then you shouldn't become a vet. Rather do something different. You know, or, or if you want to become a vet, that's something you're seriously passionate about. Improve your math, Mark. No, I'm just going to love animals. What? Do you know you have to put animals down? Oh, no. Do they do, they do that? Yes. <laughs> they do that. They do that. We focus on the wrong things. We, we become complacent. You know, people that, that and, and, and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, I'm not blaming anyone, but there's some people that want to spend a year on the ships, for example. I just want to go spend a year on the ships. And I'm not judging. I never did that. But, but why do you want to do that? Is it because there's nothing better to do? Is it because I actually just want to go have fun? I just want to go have a party for a year and then I'll let life happen after that. I want to enjoy my youth. <laughs> I knew someone that went to, to England to, to go be a bartender in England. And it's been seven, no, how long am I out of school now? 10 years, long time. 10 years and they're still there. And guess what they're doing? Bartendering. Don't you want more for your life? What about, I need to go find myself in Thailand. I just need to, I just need to go to Asia. I just need to, I, I'm so lost. I just need to find myself. Can I encourage you, take out your phone, Put on your location, go into Google Maps, and you can find yourself that way. <laughs> I just want to find myself. It's this, you know, have you ever wondered why aren't there any Rolex stores in Alberton? Have you ever thought about that? Why, aren't, why don't we have any Rolex stores in Alberton? Are you telling me there's not enough aspirational people in Alberton for them to consider even opening a store. Maybe we need to be the change in this room that is aspirational, that wants more, that wants to go further. Keep moving, keep moving. Maybe you've been joining church for any length of time and you just kind of warm a seat. And you know, sometimes there's a season where you need God to heal something in you. But when does that season end? You need to leave the hospital at some point and start getting involved and becoming one of the doctors, which means serving, getting involved, just as Brendan mentioned, getting encouraged, serving with time, talent, and treasure. Keep moving. Don't just stay apathetic. Don't just stay complacent. Jesus was on the move. He knew there's a waste of time. There's people that need Jesus. So he carried on. The second response is prayer. Matthew 14, 23, after sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Pray. Pray is such an important part of our lives. When we choose to follow Jesus, that's a conversation. Have you ever built a relationship without talking to someone? You could try. I don't know how that will work out. You can't build a relationship if you're not having conversation. People will tell you communication is key in any marriage, any relationship. It's true. If you're not talking to someone, so how can you expect your relationship with God to grow if you're not talking to Him? Talk to Him. Prayer, it's a lifestyle of prayer. It's not just a once-off. Oh, please just help me with these exams. Help me with these assignments. And then I promise I'll go to church. I, I promise I'll, I'll serve. I'll, I'll do anything. Just help me with this. Then, then you get that. And then it's like, yo, maybe next week. <laughs> Do we include Jesus in our decisions? When we're deciding what we want to do next year, what we want to do with our lives, or where we want to go, who we want to date. Yeah. Very good, do we include Jesus? Jesus, is this your best for my life? Is this what you want for me? If it is, then I'll come. Just like Peter. If this is you, Lord, I'll take this step. Yeah. That's response. Yeah. Then we look at the reaction. Fear. 
Matthew 14, 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus said to them at once, don't be afraid. I always wondered when someone says, don't be afraid, give me a reason why I shouldn't be afraid. He gives us the answer. Don't be afraid. Why? Take courage. Why? I am here. He's saying he's there. That's why you shouldn't be afraid. Get out of our comfort zones. Trust God in that space. Don't let emotions rule our life because fear is a reaction. It's an emotional response. When we see a post on, on Instagram or, or when we see a video and we get so angry, that's a reaction. It's not, we're not thinking through. We go straight to the comments and, we, and we, we say things that we shouldn't say, but it's reaction. Take a moment, be still. Jesus, is this your best for my life? And then respond. Don't let, you, emotions are there to fuel us. They're there to give us passion. They're there to give us zest. They're there for that, but they're not there to direct us. We, we need to trust God to direct us. Let emotions fuel us, but trust God to direct us. When our emotions direct us, oi, trouble, trouble. And there are many relationships that have been broken because we let emotions direct us. There were many people that we shouldn't have dated, because emotions directed us. There are certain things that we did in those relationships because emotions directed us. I, I don't need to go into detail into what that looks like, right? Response. Look at Peter's response. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. In a trial, Peter realized the best place to be is close to Jesus. I find it fascinating that he stepped out of the boat, out of his comfort zone, out of a space that was protecting him into a storm into the water, into the waves, the very thing where he's, he could sink and die. That's what he stepped into. Maybe God's calling us out of our comfort zones to draw nearer to him. That even though there's a trial that when we draw near to him, that's when life change starts to happen. In verse 28, then Peter called him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. That's his response. Let's pray that prayer. Lord, if it's you, I'll take this step. Lord, if it's you, I will study this subject. Lord, if it's you, I will date this person. Lord, if it's you. If this is something that's best for my life based on what Jesus said, that's the step I'm going to take. That's the step I want to take. That's a response. Call on Jesus. And another reaction is we focus on the trial. Peter took that step. He took that response. And then he focused on the trial. That's a reaction. Matthew 14, 30. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. When we start taking our eyes off of Jesus, that's when we start sinking. It's very easy as, as young people specifically, when we hang out with the wrong people, that we can sink. And we're not always sinking because of the trials. We're sinking because the people we hang out with are pulling us down. Maybe your trial isn't a trial per se, but it's a person that you're hanging out with that you shouldn't be. And you know that. You know this person's not good for, for you. Maybe you started hanging out with them because you wanted to help them. I want to save them. I want to show them Jesus. But then you start becoming like them. Who needs saving now? As soon as we start taking our eyes off Jesus, there's trouble. Yeah. Is this relationship, is this friendship, is this God's best for my life? Let's ask that question. Pastor Trev, spoke to Brendan and I many, many years ago, and he says, you always have to ask the question, will this bring me closer to God yeah. or will it pu pull me further away? Yeah. Every decision you make, you can base it on that. Yeah. Will this relationship bring me closer to Jesus or will it pull me further away? Will me working at this place bring me closer to Jesus or pull me further away? That's a good question to ask. It, it directs us so that it's not emotions that are running our lives. And lastly, response, focus on Jesus once again. So after he focused on Jesus, he took the step, started sinking, focused on the trial. He then focused on Jesus again. Because in Matthew 14, 32, when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped them. The focus was back on Jesus. They saw the incredible goodness of God, the power of God, the miracles that God can bring us. Imagine if every one of us would set that example by our faith. We would set the example by, by letting trials shape us. Set the example of response. Set that example. Imagine if every one of us did that. Imagine what could happen if we choose to respond with faith and not fear, with response and not reaction. What could happen? 
How could, how could our lives change if we respond with courage and with, with action, not just sit back, not be apathetic, but actually do something with our lives. That even after the service, we'll leave like encouraged and, and zest for this generation. I, fi- I find maybe this generation is apathetic because of the kind of music that we listen to. Maybe it's that. I see a lot on social media, you know, these like sad kind of depro. And I mean, it's, it's, quite, it's quite cool on the Instagram reels and stuff, but it actually brings you down. It doesn't build you up. It, it's not encouraging. Let's respond with faith. Let let God direct us. Let us trust Jesus with where we need to go. Then as a generation, we can be the change. As a nation in our own country, we can be that change. We can be the ones that will say, no, this country belongs to Jesus. This generation belongs to Jesus. Let's step up and do that. Let's step up and do something. You'll see on your way out, there's something that says each week, each one, reach one. That's intentional that it's there because as you leave, we want to encourage you to not just leave Oh, that was nice. I'm going to go carry on living my life exactly as I always had. No, but that will be intentional with going to do something with our faith. Not that our faith is just left here for a Sunday and we'll come visit it every Sunday, but we take it and we go out and we do something with it each week, each one, each one. That's so important. Come, let's take a moment to pray. Father, we're so grateful for everyone in this room. We thank you that we can be still and just listen to your voice we can be still and allow you to guide us. I pray that, that we'll think through our responses, that we won't, we won't just have reactions, that we won't let emotions rule our life and direct us, but that we can trust you for that. I pray that we can do our best, that we can do our utmost, that we can work hard, that we can trust you, and that we, can, we could trust you for the rest. We thank you for, for everyone in this room right now. We thank you that this young generation is a generation for Jesus and that you would do an incredible work in us, that when we leave here today, we'll leave changed and different, excited and and full of zest for what you have for us. We thank you. While we're in this attitude of prayer, no one looking around, I want to encourage you to take that faith step, just like Peter needed to take that step out of his comfort zone, out of the boat to draw nearer to Jesus. Perhaps that's something that you need to do today. Maybe you need to draw nearer to Jesus. Maybe you need to commit your life to Him. Perhaps you've never ever done that. You've never said, I want to commit my life to Jesus. Perhaps you have. And because of all the trials, because of everything you've faced, maybe you've drifted away. And maybe the reason you're here today is maybe to recommit your life to Him. Know this, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and and no one gets the Father except through Him. That means that if we want to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus, that we choose to follow the way. The world options many ways, but He's the way. Something special about that. I love this invitation in Matthew 7, 7, that we can ask, seek, and knock. Ask and it will be given to you. Right now, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, ask. Jesus lived 33 years, a perfect life. He didn't didn't sin at all. And He did that sacrifice for every one of us. He's already chosen us. He's already created us. He knows us. He knows all our baggage. He knows everything we've been through. And He still wants a relationship with every one of us. So maybe you find yourself in a space where you need to commit your life to Him. Then you, you need to choose to follow Him. We're not going to make you do anything silly. Stand up or come to the front. I'm going to count to three. And on, th- on three, I'm going to ask if that is you, that you can raise your hand. We can pray together and we'll close. So if you choose to follow Jesus for the first time or you want to recommit your life to him, that's you. One, two, three. Raise your hand now. That's incredible. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. That's amazing. Well done. Well done. Anyone else? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't miss this. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week. Raise your hand now. Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. That's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. Father, thank you for every person that's committed their life to you right now in this moment. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would equip them, that you would walk with them, that you would direct them, that you would guide them, that they would hear your voice so clearly, Lord. I pray that even right now, they would start to feel their their life starting to change, start, start to feel you working in their life, that as they leave today, they'll leave changed and different, knowing that you're walking by their side. Come on, everyone, pray out loud with me. Dear Lord, thank you for your love. I choose to follow you. I commit my life to you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me for my sins and mistakes. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come on, can we give those people a hand? That's incredible. Well done. Well done on that decision. The ushers are running around giving you one of, one of these packs and this will help you understand what your decision means. There's a few tips and tricks of, of what your next steps are. There is a QR code as well. You can scan that if you want to find more information, but you only have one next step and that's fast forward. Yeah. Fast forward is a course that you can sign up to. You can do that on the QR code or through the WhatsApp line and it will help you understand what is my next steps? What do I do now? Okay, I've chosen to follow Jesus. What's next? Yeah. And it will help you integrate into church life. If you've never done fast forward, make sure sure that you do fast forward i hope you enjoyed power hour it's exactly one hour well done you survived the first one keep booking your butts keep getting connected keep booking book for thanksgiving and everything else but we will see you next time